One of my favorite writing exercises that can be really helpful for uh, writing lyrics, and it's called 10 Objective Observations. And the idea is to write 10 objective observations about your environment around you with no adjectives. And it sounds easy, but it's actually really, really hard to do because I think our natural instinct is to always embellish and add descriptors for things. And you'll find the longer that you do it, the better you get at it. So I try to do these as often as I can. Every day would be really great. I obviously don't do that, but I try to do them as often as possible. And just so that you have an idea of what I mean by an objective observation, I'm gonna read a couple of mine. A car goes past outside. The sound of children playing enter through a window that is pulled open from the top so that my cats cannot escape. Music is playing from inside someone else's house. A bird dips below the drain pipe that runs along the house and flutters out of view, disappearing to the left. Nicholas is typing on his laptop. Another bird dives below the window. Maybe it's the same bird. I cannot be certain. My stomach rumbles because I have not eaten today. A car door slams shut. Vapor erupts from a diffuser on the shelf. Someone cycling breaks heavily to a complete stop. So what this exercise does is it encourages you to write. It encourages you to put pen to paper. Something that I think is a huge obstacle to us is the fact that we're aware or we're, we're thinking about the fact that when we're writing a song or a poem that someone else might listen to it, that someone else might read it and we start to write and we go, oh no, that's not good enough. And it's to stop you from having that thought, stop you from thinking, that's not good enough, I won't write it. Just write it down because later you might you might find a, a, a little image, a little motif um, that works that in a way that you never imagined when you write it. So um, here I have Tasmania, New Year's Eve, bird flying low over the lake. And I remember when I was writing a song and I was trying to write the lyrics for a middle eight, I came to this page and I immediately remembered what I was doing. And I immediately remembered what this was. I was driving alongside a lake in Tasmania on tour. And I remember seeing, I had the image came back to me, this bird, it was just kind of flying so low. And I even remember the thoughts that I was having when I was writing that observation down, I was thinking, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. I'm, I'm so ridiculous. Why am I writing about a bird flying low over a lake? I'm never gonna use this. I was judging, it was that little voice, that voice that we're trying to get rid of when we're writing these observations down. Um, I, was, I was judging myself, but I was still kind of diligently, I'm gonna write this down, I'm gonna write this observation. And that, reading that, reading that prompt took me back to that moment and I was like, this is perfect. And that little observation, that thing that when I was writing it, I was judging myself for writing it, that thing that I thought I would never use became, the bird is flying low over the lake and you told me that you were mine and now I'm flying like the bird. So one of the reasons why I love this exercise is because it gets you to write stuff down and stuff that you think is rubbish now will prompt something potentially amazing one, two, three years down the line. When I'm writing a song, I'm definitely aware of rhymes because it is, it is important to utilize them. But I think what's more important is to not utilize them at all costs at the expense of meaning. Um, and, and one of my favorite things to do can actually be to come off a rhyme, um, to, to avoid, deliberately avoid a rhyme because I think if you're constantly rhyming, it can sometimes sound quite childlike or quite like a nursery rhyme. And whilst that can be useful, particularly in a chorus, because you want people to be able to learn the lyrics quickly so that they can sing along and so that they, that, that you, you almost want to kind of write lyrics for a chorus where people can almost know what it is or before it even happens, um, so that it's satisfying for them when they hear it. But I, I would say don't, don't always, don't always force a rhyme and look at half rhymes as well. So, um, you know, I'm thinking about the first line of religion. It's, uh, 
It's human, it's our religion, no preacher to teach us to love. Two bodies, one vision, no one's watching over us. Like, so it's the, it's sort of a half rhyme. It, it works, but it's not kind of, it's not exact. And I think that's something that you can really play with. And also, actually, if you're stuck and you're not sure what rhymes, you would not believe how many sessions that I've been in that people bring up something like wiki rhyme. Use those resources because there are lots of words that rhyme that are maybe not obvious. And you know, you, the first few kind of in a, on a on a on a site like that would would be maybe the most obvious rhymes. And those are things that maybe you don't want to don't want to go into too much because they've been done before. But there are lots of kind of like half rhymes or words words where only the last bit rhymes, but it's a longer word and um, just kind of reading those and being cognizant of those can really, like, you know, you learn a lot from that. A lot of the time when I'm first figuring out a song, um, I will sort of sing what I call fake lyrics, and there'll be like a combination of just sounds and then some words. Um, so with religion, it was, it's human, it's our religion, and then kind of just whatever came next. But I, I knew I had, so I'd have a melody and I knew how many syllables there were, um, and, and I knew that then I had to just find words that would fit those syllables. So I knew it was, it's human, it's our religion. No, 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 no. So eight syllables. So I'll work like that. And that's when I start to go into kind of my scrapbook and go, okay, preacher, I see the word preacher. And I know I have this melody and I'll start working out, just kind of almost just filling in the gaps and try, trying out different different outfits in a way. It's like, okay, so no preacher, no preacher to teach us to love, that's eight. Everyone is different. And so sometimes you will, you'll be like, this is what I need to say. And so you have words and then you wanna find a melody that fits those precise uh, lyrics. But more often than not for me, I think I'm melody, melody definitely comes first. And I'm finding that I'm then trying to fill those fake lyrics up with real lyrics. And the funny thing is actually sometimes the fake lyrics, the things that you just set off the cuff will be things that stay. I had a song called Side Effects where I kept singing, I got out, I got free. And I was like, I've got to change that. I've got to, this, this is not good enough. Like I'm, I'm not sure about it. And every time I changed the lyrics, every time I moved it to something else, I was just like, just doesn't feel as good. This doesn't make that much sense to me but for some reason it makes me feel good. And I think that's something that you should always keep in mind when you're writing lyrics. It's like, sometimes you don't have to be really clever. Sometimes if, if a line gives you, if it makes you feel good, it's the right line and, and don't overthink it. I think that's a, a big thing with lyrics, I would say, do not overthink. When I first started writing songs, I would almost write whole poems and then I would pick up a guitar and then I would try and create melodies using the lyrics that I had. But the more and more that I made music, I actually found that I was really enjoying writing melodies and I wouldn't always have ideas for what the song was about. And so now a lot of the time I'll write a full melody without having any lyrics at all. And it will be hearing, listening to the sounds that I'm making with my, what I call them fake lyrics. And sometimes there'll be, you know, words that you can hear that you can pick out. And sometimes they'll just lit literally be, you know, weird sounds that come out of my mouth. But um, you'll hear kind of syllables and you'll hear the, you know, the ends of lines, you might be singing a kind of A sound or an O sound. So that'll maybe lead you when you do come later to, uh, to write lyrics or to fill those syllables out, those melodies out with real words, you might be like, well, I kind of really want to say something that has the sound of what I've been singing in this demo. And I think that's the exciting thing about writing songs is that you can, you can approach it with a whole page of lyrics and go, okay, this is exactly what I want to say. Now I have to play chords and just navigate and see how they fit, how, how a melody might fit to them. Or you can have the opposite approach, which is have a, a fully established melody and then go, okay, well, I've got a melody with eight syllables. Now I need to try and fill them. When I was younger, I was mostly just writing kind of poems and putting them to music. And now more and more, I'm I'm thinking about melody first. How, how does the melody go? Then what is it about? Then I pull from my experiences and form a song with those. <laughs>